Hello and welcome to Cadex TV. I'm Tom Bailey, London. It's 4:30 p.m. in London, 11:30 Eastern Time, and 12:30 in Bermuda. The day in history. Today in 1617, the first one-way streets were established, and that was in good old London. It's good to see that traffic congestion was a problem even then. Um, in 1833, Britain abolished slavery in the colonies, resulting in the freedom for 700,000 slaves. And today in 1917, a race riot in Houston, Texas, resulted in the deaths of 13 people, 2 black and 11 white. And now to the news. A uh, sacked policeman is holding Hong Kong tourists hostage on a Manila, a Manila coach. The former policeman, who is armed with an automatic rifle, has taken uh, hostage 25 people, including tourists from Hong Kong on the coach in Manila. Four, uh, four of the uh, foreign tour tourists who were taken hostage, three children and their mother, were escorted uh, after their release from the bus. The gunman, who is a senior inspector who was reportedly sacked over robbery and drugs claims, demanded his job back in a handwritten note in the front of the coach window. The gunman, identified as Ronaldo, Ronaldo Mendoza, has threatened via the handwritten note that a big deal would happen after 7 a.m. GMT, 3 p.m. local time, but the deadline passed without incident. Mr. Mendoza's brother, who's also a senior police officer, Gregorio Mendoza, was heard by reporters urging the government to extend his deadline by another 30 minutes. Mendoza, armed with an M16 rifle and small arms, has released nine hostages, six Hong Kong nationals and two Filipinos, mainly women and children, according to police. He asked for food those, for those remaining on board, which was delivered, and fuel to keep the air conditioning going. Uh, it seems unlikely that he will get his job back based on that performance, but I uh, will keep you updated with any developments there. We're seeing quite a lot of uh, tropical storm activity in the Atlantic, uh, Tropical Storm Danielle, currently with uh, sustained winds of 50 knots, forecast to be upgraded in the next 24 hours to a Category 1 hurricane with sustained winds of 65 knots, um, is currently on course northwest, currently heading for Bermuda, but it's likely to veer to the north, and so is not really threatening any meaningful landfall at the moment, but we'll keep you updated on that. We're seeing Tropical Storm Frank in the uh, Eastern Pacific tracking the, uh, the um, Mexican Pacific coast almost due south of Mexico City at the moment. Sustained winds of 50 knots also forecast to be upgraded to a Category 1 hurricane in the next 24 hours with sustained winds of 65 knots. Um, and again heading out to the Atlantic Ocean, no imminent threat to uh, Hawaii. And finally, another tropical storm, Minduel, in the uh, Western Pacific, is uh, heading sort of for North Vietnam, sort of landfall just south of Hanoi. Um, it's currently got sustained winds of 40 knots, and those are forecast to strengthen to 45 knots in the next uh, 24 hours, so we'll keep you posted on that as well. Meanwhile in London, Lloyds of London underwriter Equity Star is under investigation by the city regulator over concerns about the impact of bodily injury claims on its balance sheet. The syndicate, one of the largest motor and home insurers operating in the marketplace, said it is cooperating with the FSA, the Financial Services Authority, which is thought to have launched a Section 166 investigation, or so-called Skilled Persons Report, into the company. Under the Financial Services and Markets Act, these require companies to appoint independent, an independent body to conduct a review whether a regulator has concerns about its corporate governance or system controls. UK motor underwriters have suffered heavily in recent months as a rise in fraudulent and bodily injury claims, often through accident lawyers, coincided with lower cost of insurance driven in part by price comparison sites. In June, Equity's parent company, Insurance Australia Group, AIG, uh, IAG, said it faced a charge of 100 and, sorry, £210 million to cover a rise in motor-related bodily injury claims after conducting an actuarial review of its UK business. At the time, IAG said its insurance margin 
uh, was now likely to be 6% to 7% in the year ending June. Insurer had originally forecast a margin of 9.5% to 11% before suffering the, quote, significant deterioration in its UK claims experience. Um, direct Line, the UK insurer's subsidiary Direct Line Verishung, which is part of UK di Direct Line and thus owned by the government-controlled Royal Bank of Scotland, has reported premium income for its German operation of 140 million euros, which is about 177 million dollars for 2009, representing a strong rise of nearly 10%. The company thus outperformed again the German motor market, which declined by 1.5%. The company's pre tax profit rose from 270,000 euros to 460,000 euros. It was not able to give an after tax figure. Direct Line has been active in Germany since 2001 when it acquired an existing company and now has 400,000 insured cars. The company has 340 staff. Reserve releases of 1.6 million euros had a positive effect on results, while in the previous year the company had added 11 million euros to results. Another factor makes figures difficult to compare to other market participants. Direct Line Germany ceded 51 million euros to reinsurers, mainly its parent, compared with 54 million euros in 2008. While the amount ceded went down, reinsurance commissions received by Direct Line went up from 19 million euros to 22 million euros. This makes reinsurance commission of a whopping 43% of ceded commissions, a figure that would be difficult to achieve in the open market. Again, the company felt unable to explain the figure. <coughs> in Hong Kong, China Cinder Asset Management Group, a leading mainland China consortium, is looking to buy a stake in AIA, American International Insurance, according to the South China Morning Post. Cinder is in talks with um, AIG, AIA's parent company to buy a stake either before Asian insurers initial public offering in Hong Kong in October or during the IPO process as a strategic investor according to the sources which were bankers. The report didn't say which other firms were in the consortium. Earlier this month the 21st Century Business Herald reported a consortium including China Life and China Cinder Asset Management and Fossen Group had dropped its bid for AIA because the parties couldn't agree on a price. Lloyds of London insurer Hiscox has reported first half pre-tax pre profit cut from £141.4 million to £97.2 million. That's down more than 30% year on year because of catastrophic claims from UK winter freeze, chilly earthquake, windstorm Xanthia and deep water horizon oil spill. It said it had lowered, lower investment returns as well. Chairman Robert Hiscox said the story remains the same and is a good one. Hiscox is dis defensively placed for these market conditions with a robust book of reinsurance balanced by growing specialist business. When the market turns, which it inevitably will, and interest rates rise, which they must one day, we will have another surge of growth. In the meantime, we will keep our tinder dry with disciplined, selective underwriting and cautious investing. And finally today, Egypt's top prosecutor has said that security lapses are to blame for the theft of a Vincent van Gogh painting from a Cairo museum. Prosecutor General Abdul Megudig Mohammed said on Sunday that none of the alarms and only seven out of the 43 surveillance cameras at the Mahmoud Khalil Museum were functioning when the painting was stolen. He, he, told, Euro, uh, he told Egypt's state news agency that security at the museum was generally superficial. The canvas, called Poppy Flowers, was valued at around $50 million was cut out of its frame at the museum in broad daylight on Saturday. Police were focusing their search on the country's air and seaports, a security official said, adding that museum staff will be interrogated and that state prosecutors have launched two separate investigations. The official said security cameras and alarms at the museum had long been out of order. He said cameras had not been working for a long time and neither had the alarm system. Museum officials said they were looking for spare parts for the security system, but hadn't managed to find them by the time the theft took place. Well, that's all from us today. We'll be back with you at the same time tomorrow. Until then, have a very good day.